to the entangled and the recovering of sight to the blind, to comfort the hurt and discouraged, to restore the abandoned and forsaken into the fellowship by grace, to create awareness of our God-given gifts that we may serve the Lord with our whole hearts, minds, and spirits. Therefore, we are preparing to be a people ready to meet Christ at his return. All right, our vision. To stand non-violently against oppressive powers affecting the natural and spiritual productivity within our homes, churches, and communities through comprehensive, compassionate outreach ministries. grateful for the leadership gathering before service because y'all don't know y'all be giving me what I need before I get up <laughs> Woo, I'm just grateful I'm full so let's go to God in prayer let me sing this little song first Lord I lift your name on high praises I'm so glad you're in my life I'm so glad you came to save us Lord I lift your name on high Oh, the ground. 
children for whatever reason God oh we pray a special prayer God oh God and we pray God that you would join together those relationships that have been broken God in the name of Jesus don't let them go another day God don't let them go another day without reaching out to one another oh God give them the courage God to move in the name of Jesus, give them the courage to take that first step, God. It may not be perfect, but we know we make the pro we make progress with our steps. We make progress as we move. Oh God, let them no longer stand stagnant, God. In the name of Jesus, soften the hearts, God. Prepare the hearts, God. In the name of Jesus, rebuild those relationships, God. And for those that didn't have relationships, let's start to build. In the name of Jesus, I don't know who this is for, God, but God said, now is the time. In the name of Jesus, now is the time. That thing you've been longing for, now is the time. Just believe it and receive it. In the name of Jesus, oh, we glorify your name, God. Thank you for the move. Thank you for the move in this place. Thank you for the move in this place. Because when you move in this place, God, there's got to be a move in our lives. There's got to 
there'll be some changes taking place, God. And we thank you for the change. It may be a little scary, God, but we trust you to, put, to, to walk us through it. In the name of Jesus, oh God. And we ask that you anoint the speaker on today, God. Anoint his words, God. Anoint his words, God. Anoint the message that he has in the name of Jesus and prepare our hearts to receive, God. Let us be good ground, God, in the name of Jesus and anoint the praise team as they come forth, God, because I feel that better days are ahead, God. I thank you, Lord, for the better days. I thank you for the better days, God. I thank you for the better days, Lord Jesus. And I glorify your name. These things we ask, God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because you're worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because you're merciful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The evangelist said better days are coming. If you believe it, I dare you to yell out better days. Put your hands together like this.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you. God, we thank you because it's the best day and that means things are turning around. That means something is being fixed. Something is being changed and I am ever so grateful that I can declare and decree that this is the best day of my life. Hallelujah.
turning around. Anybody in need of a turnaround? It's turning around. It's turning around.
before it's done. Shout in the room, it's already done. It's already, yes. Yes. It's already done. She's already healed. He's already set free. It's all. It's already done. I don't have to see it. I don't have to see it to believe that it's already. chapter 4 Romans chapter number 4 please yes God verse number 16 was where I'll begin and I'll be reading today from the new uh, international version I believe the NIV uh, the NIV Romans chapter number 4 verse beginning at verse 16 you got it the Bible says, therefore, the promise comes by faith so that it might be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring. Not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. How did he do it? Verse 18 says, against all hope, Abraham uh, in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. 
Without weakening in faith, uh, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old. And Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Watch the text. And being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. I need you to look at someone uh, on this Father's Day today. And let me share a gender neutral uh, title today. You were made for this moment. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. You were made. <laughs> yes, sir for this moment I can't I, I can't claim everything else I can just tell you that you were made <laughs> uh huh uh huh ah God I felt that too Bishop can I just borrow a, a couple of y'all in the room that really don't understand why the moment you're in just does not seem as if it feels the way it feels right now it's hard to even uh, uh, put in my mind how it is that I'm dealing with what I'm dealing with. But God just gave me a declarative word today that I was made for this moment. I don't know what moment you're in or what you got going on in your life, but I just need you to accept the fact that you were made for this moment. Whew. This is the fifth lesson. Jesus Christ, the fifth lesson as we talk about the evidences of being filled with the Spirit. And on lesson five, my argument is expectation. That being filled with the Spirit will help me to expect some stuff. Expectation connects and leads the believer to what God has made possible by the Holy Spirit. He got. See, the reason why I think we struggle so bad today is because we need something to help us to get to what God has made possible. Let me back up and share that in order for it to be a possible, somebody got to speak it. But in order for me to get to it, I got to sift through the things of life in order to achieve what the thing has said I can be. And so then in the heart of uh, the believer, the spirit has to do some work. Because if God made you a thing, the, the opposite will show up first. Y'all miss me already. If God decided to make you a church... The opposite of you being a church would be the first thing that you experience. Y'all going to make me go extemporaneously. See, the, the thing is, is that when, when it was that we started Grace, we did not start with a big cathedral and a whole lot of people. We started with a group of people that believed. That was number one. We started with, I believe it was 10 that believed. And the 10 that believed said, we're going to do what thus saith the Lord. Uh, we started with a group of people that decided to believe God. And watch this. When we decided to believe God, we had to make that decision under duress. Uh, because we had, amen, an obstacle in our way. And that obstacle, interestingly enough, was people that said yes and now saying no. <laughs> Can I back up and just share that oftentimes God puts you in a position where doors will close in front of you. And when such doors close, you then get a chance to have the testimony that there's a blessing behind closed doors. <laughs> that when it was that they locked us out of church <laughs> and told me and Bert you and the rest of y'all can get up out of here because we don't need y'all believing like that around here and so then God then got in my spirit and told me that you're not coming back to this place but the church is going forward and good God Almighty he 
said the church is going forward and I'm saying God we don't have a building the church is going forward but God all we have is 10 members the church is going forward but God I don't know how it's going to be done and he said you just relax because I'm the one that put the church in place you just got to believe that what I'm going to make possible you were made It appears, Bishop, <laughs> that things mean differently according to the source you get the information from. <laughs> because when mama say something, it's gospel. When, when, but, but, but we got to be careful what sources we're getting information from. Here, here's what I want to share. Here's what, here's what I want to share. See, 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 the thing is, in April, we had a discussion on ESPN about a young lady that hit uh, uh, college basketball by storm. Caitlin Clark is her name. And they, they, they talked about how she is the all-time leading scorer of women's uh, college basketball players. ESPN reported that she is the all-time leader in points. But although this is a great source, the question is, is it true? <laughs> because truth depends on who's talking. <laughs> oh, 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 let me, let, me, let me ease into it. Let me ease into it and share that we have a book, D'Angelo, that most folk call gospel. And that book is called, watch this, the Guinness Book of World Records. And on the shelf, here's what it says. Okay, that, that there are some things that are recorded in this book that uh, we today will call true. That the heaviest man weighs 1,069 pounds. <laughs> he he, he kind of fat, isn't he? <laughs> the, the tallest man was 8'11", and he wore a size 37 double-A shoe. Mm -hmm. the, the world record for bearing children is 69. <laughs> I need to hug my church. <laughs> We'd be a mega church after she finished. <laughs> Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> this, this Russian woman achieved this honor because she had eight sets of twins, seven sets of triplets, and four sets of quads. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm, that's, let's hear up and get past that. <laughs> but, but listen now, this is according to the Guinness Book of World Records. Okay. And then the Guinness Book of World Records says, in modern times, the oldest mother to give birth to a child was October of 1956. That at the age of 57, this woman had a child. At 57. <laughs> Look at all these under 50s looking around. <laughs> at 57. My, my question that I have for you today is, are records made to be broken? <laughs> well, they can keep that one, preacher. <laughs> 57? Mm -hmm. The thing is, is that oftentimes when you look at what has not uh, happened, you tend to say, well... They did it, and that had to be a special circumstance. But what, we're, what, is, what is recorded is considered to be true by the Guinness Book of World Records. But the Bible says different. That a woman at 90 years old had a son by the name of Isaac. The question that we have to raise is, 
What do we choose to believe? We can hold fast that in modern times, this is what, re- what, what was recorded. But what God gave me, Mother Lee, on our way to church is that things happened before you started writing it down. <laughs> and what is true to me may not necessarily be true to you just because you didn't keep good records. I got a record of what took place. And I'm going to hold on to the record that I choose to believe. That if I choose to believe this God of the Bible, then he suggests then that that there are some things recorded in scripture that I got to hold fast to. Because if the scripture is true, then what God says is gospel for me. And so then, watch this, before they were writing things down, you had something called oral tradition. Oral tradition means is that they they begin to share truth because they begin to tell it everywhere uh, that they would go. And so then the, the family bishop would gather around and listen to the fathers. Ah, oh God, I, I need to be careful here because this will spark me into a preaching frenzy. Because oral tradition will make you say something. Because the fathers would always recount the things of God. And so then, Bishop, this is what gives me the inference when I begin to understand why I had a conversation with my cousin on yesterday. Yesterday, uh, he was sitting at the table and we were having dinner. <laughs> My cousin was telling me how frustrated he was about the system that he's dealing with. <laughs> that he is a non custodial father <laughs> fighting the child support system. <laughs> and I begin to tell him <laughs> don't fight child support. <laughs> Father, your child. God, I feel like hollering in this place. Because oftentimes you'll get caught up in the fight and forget about the most important thing at the table. It's the child that needs to be fathered. And so then, buddy, I need you to understand that no matter what the court has to say, you were made to be the father. And God put you in position for you to take that child to the next level. And the only way she's going to get there is if you give her your faith because the father's values are transferred God said to Moses I am the God of your fathers oh sit down bishop you'll make me nervous he said he said I am the God of your fathers and so watch this man I need to encourage you that the best gift you can give your children is the gift of God you pass on what helped you get to where you are so they can use that to get to where they have to go if you mess around and let the temptations or all of those others cultivate who you are and you only look forward to the sixth day of September or the month of September then the only thing you can pass on to them is how to have kids but oh my God if you listen to what God has to say he will teach you how to have a family any man with product can have a kid but oh my God it takes a real one to sit down during hard times and raise a family I'm looking to preach to some men in the place because God is calling for the man uh, to be the man for the moment Uh, stop trying to be a part time man Uh, I need you to be a man all the time Uh, don't you come up in here and be a man on Sunday Uh, I need you to be a man seven full days a week uh, because your children need oh y'all ain't ready I am the God of your fathers And because I'm the God of your fathers, there's an expectation for you to father what I gave you. And on Father's Day, I want to tell you now that fatherhood has no expiration date. You're a father when they're born and you're a father when they're grown. You're a father when they like you. You're still the father when they don't like you. Fatherhood has no expiration date. And so church, I want you to understand that here it is on Father's Day. God has ordered a discussion to take place. Because many a times we can't achieve what we need to achieve because it has not been modeled for us how to get there. 
the Bible says that we have a man by the name of Abraham. And Abraham is the father of us all. And he is giving us a pattern to achieve what God has said. We can't get there except we follow the pattern. Come here, seamstress. Let me talk to you. Don't go off the script. Follow the pattern. I don't know who I came to preach to, but can I park right there? That too many of you have a pattern, but you're trying to create your own way. Sit yourself down somewhere and follow follow the pattern it's already designed for you all you got to do is follow instructions but you arguing with the gps saying i see a shortcut don't take the shortcut but follow the pattern there's a reason why you got to take the long route possibly because god needs to cultivate you and develop what needs to be developed if you get there too fast you're gonna mess up what's there but if you let god put it in position at the time that God has it in place you will then achieve something that was never done and time will be made up when you arrive if you do it God's way push your neighbor and say follow the pattern stop trying to create your own stop trying to be all wonderful and say you don't need no pattern you can do it by hand and you can mess up and have a Gordon Gar trail rather than a piece that God would be proud of y'all ain't gonna talk I came to share that we in the church need to follow the pattern. I don't care who is not following the Bible. I don't care about those folk with purple shirts standing on the outside telling me about how I'm doing it wrong. I'm going to follow the text and do what thus saith the Lord. I ain't denouncing nothing. I'm going to do what thus saith the Lord. I ain't running from nothing either. I'm going to do what thus saith the Lord. And if you don't like it, you can be mad at me all you want to what's true to you is true to you but the bible declares that god is a god of all truth and so that god is who i'm gonna follow so 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 caitlin clark riding on what the ncaa says but lynette woodard said you didn't break my record. <laughs> Sarah <laughs> said to the woman in Russia that had all them kids, or the 57-year-old rather, that had one at 57, Sarah said, at 57, I wasn't even thinking about kids. <laughs> I thought about it, but it didn't happen. And the thing is, is that she was judged Sarah was in her barren season. And you got to be careful how people determine who you are in your barren season. You got to be careful how you believe what folks say in your barren season. Can I tell you that you will have moments where you will be the most successful, but you will also have moments where you will be dealing with barrenness. It's called peaks and valleys. And the problem that I have with the church is that we don't mind being at the peak. But who you are is when you are in the valley. I'm cool to have friends while I'm at the top. But I really need somebody when I'm at the bottom. And oh my God, it's amazing to me how folk want to ride with you while everything is going well. But I pay very close attention to the script and the things that folks say when I'm dealing with a barren moment. Because when I'm barren, I'm not at my best. And I'm telling you right now that the Bible declares that this woman dealt with barrenness for a season. She was the one that everybody talked about. She had a man that believed God. And they asked the question, well, what's wrong with you? If he believed God, then why have you not produced? Can I sneak up on somebody and preach and tell you that just because you're not productive does not mean that God is not going to do it. Just because it has not happened does not mean that God is not going to have the last say-so. But you've got to go through the barren season and still believe. Can you push somebody on your your role and tell them go through your barren seasons and still believe that's the crisis in the text because a barren season is designed 
to talk me out of what I'm believing God for. And the interesting thing about it is, is that I came to talk about the Abrahamic decision. What is the Abrahamic decision, preacher? It is going and not knowing. <laughs> Go to a place that I'll show you. What's the place? I don't know. Your job is to go. What's wrong with church? We ain't going nowhere unless we have destination. <laughs> God can tell you to do a thing and you want God to give you the whole script and you ain't left yet. You want God to show him. He want, you want God to show you how it's going to end in the beginning. The fact that it's God that said it ought to be enough for you to go. But the thing is, is that the Abrahamic decision, watch this, is one that we all have to make. And just because you put your clothes on right, don't mean that you're going to make the right decision. The Abrahamic decision is going and not knowing. And I'll be honest and tell you that you can do that sometimes. But you also can struggle at times. See, see. Can I get an honest church? Have you ever struggled with going and not knowing? <laughs> Have you ever struggled <laughs> with, with continuing to go forward? You don't know how it's going to work out. But right now, it looks like it ain't going to work. You got some Abrahamic decisions in the congregation. Should I continue this or should I quit? Should I cut my losses, Bishop, and just get on down? You understand what I'm saying? But, but there's a time when you have to say, who is telling me to go? It's different if I go on my own. It's different if I decide to go because I feel something. But I got to go on the word of God. Oh, God, can I give you some proof? When we started this church, I didn't know what to do. All I knew was God told me that I'm, I'm coming out of something that he is getting me out of. And so then I had to look at God and look at my own statements. Because my statement was, I ain't pastor in no church and I don't want to be nobody's pastor. If God wants me to pastor, these folk going to have to come and get me, and then I will pastor them. And when that happened, I then had to recount what I said, because now I got proof that God called me. And time I got proof, then here came problem. The thing you got to understand is this, is that the devil is throwing problems because you got proof. You missed your chance to shout. Now that you got proof, what you going to do with the proof? Are you going to act as if the proof is not there? Or are you going to throw things away because you got problems? Let me teach you a couple things in the text. I believe we're ready to go now. I can teach and I can go home and enjoy Father's Day. Thank you, Jesus. Going and not knowing. Well, that ain't even my sermon. I just threw that in there for good. Watch this. Number one, let's look at verse number 17. It's better to teach the Bible than to say some stuff that's not there. Watch this. The Bible says, as it is written, look at the text. I have made you a father of many nations. Okay. The key word there is I made you. Okay. Okay. How many of you know that God made you for this moment? Mm. Okay, so then we have something called divine election. Mm -hmm. Divine election. This is, this is uh, where we, we understand the, the value of this thing called calling. Okay, when you're called, you are elected. God is the person that does the choosing. Whew. Did I go too fast? When you are called, that means that God elected you. Uh-huh. That means that God selected you. That means that God chose you. And watch this, Derek. He chose you with the problems you have. Okay. <laughs> That's the part that folk don't get. Because you thought that God called you when you was perfect. He called you when you was in a mess. Okay. This, this, see, see how quiet it got? 
Because many people don't understand that how can God call me and I'm as messy as I am? It's because he knows even though you got mess in you, you also got ministry in you. He knows that the mess don't determine who you are. That's just a moment of what you're dealing with right now. And you, if you mess around and let the devil convince you of who you are while you're in a mess, then you will accept that the valley is the only place you're supposed to be. But you've been to the peak. Therefore, you know that there is something different than what I see right now. Election explains, watch this church, your designation. Election explains that God chose me, watch this, when nobody else would. Thank you, God. God chose me, Derek, when I was not everybody else's favorite. The reason why, church, that preaches to me is because I've been in the room and we played a pickup game. And Devin, I was not selected first. And so because I was not selected first, I had to sit there and watch other people pick until I got picked. I came to talk to somebody in the room that feel you're not worthy of being picked. God decided to put you where you are. And when they picked you, when God picked you, he knew who he picked. He knew that you had the business. He knew you had the skill. He knew you were the great one that you are. But don't you determine who you are based on who picks you. You got to understand that when God picks you, he has purpose on the inside of you. Verse 17 gives us some indications. Uh, the Bible says that God creates as we go. So destiny then uh, is, is for whom he calls. So then when God calls you to something, he creates something. Mm -hmm. When God calls you to something, he created something. And so, church, watch this. The spirit is leading uh, you in faith to become what you are called. Oh God, can I say that again? The spirit is leading us in faith to become what we have been called. The Bible says, watch this, that God said to Abram, I have made you a father of many nations. The Bible says that his name at the time was Abram and Abram meant high father. He meant, his name meant father, but he didn't have no children. And then he went to the true and living God and God began to say to him you were named by somebody else I'm going to call you another name and I'm going to give you a designation to go along with your name and so once God began to call him Abraham he then watch this took on a shift because he had to become what God had made can you push your neighbor in this place and tell your neighbor you got to become what God has made I know you don't have it yet but but you got to become it. I know you're not there yet, but you got to become it. Oh God, when I married Shanta, she was just a pretty woman, but I did not know that she's becoming a first lady because I was nobody's pastor at the time of the wedding. You got to understand that God calls you and then you become. I need somebody in this room to say I'm becoming something. You can call me what you want to, but I'm becoming. Oh, I feel like hollering right now because I'm evolving into a place. I'm evolving into a person that God says is going to be better than the folks that didn't pick. Yes, God. Mother Lee, I'm, I'm struggling with it now because, watch this, it makes me understand that when God made you a father, it was more men than you thought. Because paternity comes from the Lord. <laughs> oh, I know you watch the judge shows. Back in the day, me and Shanta used to be late to work. Trying to figure out who Mari was going to designate to be the father. <laughs> That's when the Mari show came on at 7. That was the devil, wasn't it? Because all of us had to be at work at 8 o'clock. Was trying to sit at home and still see who was going to be the father. And the story was so complex if we couldn't see, they put the picture of the baby up and we was trying to figure out, no, he don't look like him. You understand? And so, especially on those good shows, we called in. I got some little car trouble right now. I'll be there when, when the car gets fixed. We need to determine who is the father. God says, men, you are the father. 
D'Angelo, you be the pappy. <laughs> I the pappy. <laughs> Watch this. For God to make a thing, here's what you got, here's what you got to understand. That means that God set it in place. When he said, I have made you a father, he set it in place. Abraham had to get to the place that God set. I don't know who I'm preaching to in here. But God has already set it. The thing is, you got to get to it. And the thing, and watch this. How do I get to it? I got to believe what he said. Because in your head are sources that may not be true. Because you can't be who God said if you keep believing them. Because sometimes, Devin, folk will use words to make you think the opposite of what God has set in place. So when you begin to walk in purpose, you then upset folk that didn't set that for your name. When you begin to walk in purpose, they begin to say stuff like who she thinks she is. You, 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 you look, look at you. Just look at you. I'm looking. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking that God has set some things in place. You didn't even invite me to the table. But I got a God that already RSVP'd me. You might not call my name because you're hating. But God has already put my name on the list. And you might be standing on the outside while I'm on my way on the inside. Because what God said is set in place. I need y'all to understand, watch this, your promotion is set in place. Your approval is set in place. Oh God, your, your, your award is set in place. And watch this, and you don't have to kiss up to nobody. Oh God, to get what God has set in place. Oh God, I'm so sick of these folk today that think you got to scratch where you don't itch and laugh at jokes that ain't even funny. Just to advance in the world of which that we're in. But if God set a thing in place, you can have a racist boss and still become what God has already made. Because God has elected you to get there. And it does not matter what they put in front of you. What God says shall come to pass. Push your neighbor and say, don't you do it. Don't you discredit your character just to try to get something. What God has for you is for you you don't have to be nothing but who God says and even with your issues God still set it in place oh God. I could stop right now but Abraham gave two concepts he said he believes in a God that gives life to the dead and he believed in a God that call into existence the things that don't exist and if he calls into existence the stuff that don't exist, when is it going to exist? When you get there. <laughs> I've been working on a sermon for about 15 years. And the title of it is There. Remember that. Yeah. And, and go to a place that I'll show you. When will I get to the place when he shows me? What's my job to do? Go. And the thing is, is that watch this. He's calling into existence destination. We got to get in the traveling mode. And as Mother Lee would say, put on your traveling shoes. And go to the place that God has so designed for you to go. Stop trying to hang out at the layover. Because that's not your final destination. You got to get in position to go. Because where God has made for you. Watch this. Has more capacity than where you are. And sometimes church folks will convince you to get comfortable. But this is where the devil is a liar. What God has for me is better than where I am now. And I'm moving forward until I get to where God says. Somebody open your mouth and tell God thank you. I'm not stuck in this place. God has taken me to another level. Because I understand that Abraham believed in a God. Watch this bishop that gives life to the dead. This was before we had the doctrine of resurrection. This is before Christ went to the cross. This is before Jesus died and gave life to somebody. Abraham believed that God can give life to a dead thing. It is because we conclude when he took his son to the mountaintop and raised the knife. We said that he's going to kill him. But Abraham said even if I kill him, the God that I serve will 
going to raise him from the dead uh, because God ain't going to give me nothing and then kill it. Uh, open up your mouth and say, I believe in resurrection. Uh, God can make me do some stuff uh, that seems to be crazy, uh, but he's able to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. That's, that's the election. But then secondly, the text says that there's an expectation. Let me share something with you. Expectation helps you to find motivation. See, see, it is the secret sauce creating perseverance and tenacity to achieve what God has made possible. Uh, the Bible says against hope, Abraham believed in hope. So uh, he became the father of many nations. When did he become the father of many nations? When he believed. Uh, watch this. He expected some stuff. Ah, God, he expected some stuff beyond what he was dealing with. And so the father of our faith gave us something to help us in weak moments because fathers build resilience and hope by modeling it in the eyes of those that God has exposed us to. Many of you are experiencing opposition and resistance, but check the record. If God has allowed you to be in place, then God is telling you model it for me. Show your children how to be a man, even though you don't have all the money. Show your sons how, amen, to be a man in the house and not be a liability. Show them that you got to get up and go to work. Even if you don't even know where work is, you got to get up out that bed and stop playing the PlayStation all day and wonder how the rent going to get paid. Get up out that bed. And even if you got to cut grass, do what you got to do to make make ends meet because if God made you a father he has given you the ability to provide because you can't share God's name and ruin it with your behavior so then he's saying model it for me model what it looks like to be a man in a culture where it is that manhood is scarred and folk would rather you be a sissy folk would rather you be less than a man than be the man that God has called you to be I call this church to stand up I need some men to stand up and be a real man in the midst of adversity. Stop trying to make a woman take care of you. You take care of the woman God gave you. I need some men to stand up. Manhood ain't part time. You a man all the time. I need you to be a man all the time. Stop trying to call in sick on manhood. Manhood means that you'll be responsible for yourself and responsible for those that God has given you to care for. Stop trying to shortcut it and stop trying, Lord have mercy. Stop trying to make the woman be the man, but you be a man of your house because God has made you for the moment. He has made you a man for this moment. And guess what? You're a man not only for your house, but for the village that God has put you in. And so Abraham is the father of us all because inclusively bishop he he then became a model that we can follow and one (laughs) yes god that can teach me how to expect some stuff because in the text i need to give you this greek word because that anchors expectation the greek word is in verse 20 where it says And glory to God. Verse 20 said, he wavered not, but waxed strong through faith. Okay, so the Greek word there is in in dunama or in dunamu. That means to put power in. (laughs) Expectation. Devin, don't you make a song and not give me credit. I saw you with your pencil. In dunamu means to put power in. That means that when weakness shows up, expectation puts power in my weak place and allows me to believe beyond the weakness and see the glory of God come to pass. Y'all missed it. Uh, When it is that you experience, Lord have mercy, God putting power in, that's because you don't have the power to do it yourself. So then you need a power externally. 
to then give you the power you need to go forward. It's almost as if you've ever had a car. I'm finna come on your road now. Since it is that you act like you don't know what I'm talking about. But Bishop, I used to drive and get out and push. I used to have a truck, Bishop. It was red. I used to call it the fire truck. Oh, God, it was a long wheelbase Toyota. 1972, five speed. And God, Bishop, one time I was riding down the street and my spark plug popped off. And while I was driving, it started sounding like a lawnmower. I was driving, it was real smooth. And then I heard a pop. And then, Lord have mercy, it started sounding real bad. I pulled up in my family's yard. And my my buddy Ricky looked at me after he got his breath together because he laughed all the way me coming up the driveway. After he got his breath together, he said, I can see the problem. Let me put this screw in place. And then let me give you a boost because even though you have come as far as you have you have exhausted the power in the engine so you need an external power to boost you good God almighty and allow you to get started again and Dunamu does that it gives you a boost I dare somebody to tell the truth I'm broke down where I am because I'm dealing with the issues of my reality but in the midst of you having such issues you've got a God that can enter in and he can give you a boost can you touch your neighbor on your road and say neighbor you look like you need a boost let me hold your hand and begin to intercede and pray because I've seen too many victories to let defeat have the last word touch your neighbor and say it ain't over because you got a God that's ready to take you to the next level I came to give you a boost that God ain't through that in the midst of you not having the money you were still made for the moment touch your neighbor and say I give you a boost he's going to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think I dare you to tell somebody that I came to church to get a boost I've been hurting all week it's been painful where I am but I'm trusting in God to give me a boost because I see where I'm going I see what he's doing and I trust that it shall be done and so then I gotta trust him to give me a boost when my account is in the negative when it is that the money is not there I gotta trust him to give me a boost when I'm fighting against denominational hatred and I got folk that would rather see me at the bottom rather than at the top I need a boost because sometimes you're connected to folk that would rather see you in Lodabar than to see you in Jerusalem. I need a boost because I'm dealing with children that would choose drugs over happiness. I need a boost because I'm concerned about my grandchildren and the foolery that their parents keeps putting them in. I need a boost and then I call on the name of the Lord Jesus and I understand that when I need a boost it's because I can't do it by myself can you help me model this real quick grab somebody by the hand and tell your neighbor help me stand because if I pray I can chase a thousand demons by myself but if we pray together we will have more power because my spirit begins to bear witness with your spirit and God can do a major thing if we would just pray together I'll pray for you and you pray for me and watch God change things let's model it in grace rest on your feet in the building and say neighbor I'll pray for you you pray for me and watch God change it if you believe he can change it then lift your voice and say God I thank you for giving my neighbor the strength to get up because she models something when you got up you testified that God will give life 
to the dead. While you sat there, you were dead in your stuff. While you were sitting there, the devil was convincing you that it ain't going to get no better. But when you got up on your feet, you testified that the same God that raised Jesus just got me up. Pause there. Let me praise him. The same God that got Jesus up just got me up. And since I got up, I got a shout just because I got up. Can I take a few seconds and give God a shout because I just got up? Oh, God. Hallelujah. It might not mean nothing to you, but I'm shouting because I got up. Depression told me that you'll never get up. But look at me standing. So on the count of three, I need you to release a shout in the building because you got up from the thing that depressed you. You got up from walking out on your life. You got up from the disappointment. You got up from the struggle. You got up from the bankruptcy. You got up when you lost it all. You got up when you got fired. I'm coming on your road. You got up when they called you dumb. You got up when they scarred your name. You got up when they told you you would never preach again. You got up when they told you that you're a nobody. But since I got up, I owe the Lord a shout because he got me up. Somebody here, praise him because he did it. Praise him for getting you up. Praise your God because he can do it again. And if you believe it, take your praise to another level. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, God. And so I believe that Abraham had expectations in his bones. But the last thing, Bishop, is Abraham says about something that we learned in Genesis. That he had a God that creates ex nihilo. (laughs) Ex nihilo. So, uh I start with, I got a God that elected me. I got a God that gave me expectations. But this God operates ex nihilo. What does that mean? It is in Genesis chapter number one. The Bible declares that the earth was void and without form. But God says, let there be ex nihilo, out of nothing. God is creating. Good evening, Grace. May I say not nothing else, but I need you to know that when you hear what God is saying and you walk to where the place God told you to go, God is creating a step every time you move forward. You just miss what I said. But can I get a couple of Michael Jackson fans in my congregation? Brother Jackson, do you know about Michael Jackson? Do you know about him? Michael Jackson had a song called Billy Jean in his father's day. But the kids is not my son. Michael Jackson had a video that Michael, when he walked every time he took a step, the light would come on, which would mean and signify that his moves forward had synergy with the power that was lighting the steps. I feel like shouting here because every time you go to the place that God has called you to go and nothing is there, when you take a step forward, God has already created 
the foundation uh, for you to walk forward on. Uh, and so I'm closing by telling you that it does not have to uh, be in place uh, for God to move. Uh, it does not have to uh, be solid uh, for God to do it for you. Uh, it does not have to uh, be worked all the way out uh, for God to make it happen. Uh, because while uh, we're trying to figure it out, Wild, you're trying to work on it. God is working it out for you. So grab somebody and say, neighbor, God has created ex nihilo out of nothing. And I know that your peers have called you a nothing. I know that your teacher told you that you will amount to nothing. That's good news because God creates ex nihilo. He can start with nothing and make something wonderful. Lift your voice and praise him. 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 And so, Bishop, I close with this. In order for God to do it, ex nihilo, that suggests that I qualify for miracles. Grab somebody and let's close strong, Trevor. Somebody here just qualified for a miracle. Why? Because I believe. Hug your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm believing God for the miracle that you prayed for on your way to church. Yes, I know you prayed and you wondered if God will do it. But God just told me, I'm giving you mail, that he's going to do it miraculously. So let the master overcome your misery with your miracle. My master will overcome my misery with a miracle. He's going to do it just for you. And it's tailor-made for you to get it. And if you believe that you qualify for the miracle, say yes. Say yes. Y'all are too quiet in here. If it's a miracle, then that means that I couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. So everything that's about to happen for you God's gonna do it God's gonna do it God's gonna do it when the devil shows you what you don't have you tell the devil I don't have it but God is gonna do it he's gonna heal my son wake up my neighbor he's gonna do it he's gonna fix what I can't fix myself. God's gonna do it. He's gonna fix what's broken. If it's a marriage, God's gonna do it. If it's your children, God's gonna do it. And I dare you to get ready for the finale. We're in the season where every show is setting us up for the season finale. I came to tell you that God is setting you up for the finale. But don't you wait until you see it. Shout now. Don't you wait until God does it. Shout now. Don't you wait until the battle is over with. Shout.